And as Terry Pratchett uh, used to say, the old curse of the Agitean Empire is, may you live in interesting times. We find ourselves in interesting times. We are all self-isolating within our own domiciles, locking ourselves down to avoid the ravages of the coronavirus, also known as COVID-19. Justin, how you doing? Fine. And you know, the age of the introverts is finally here. I've been preparing for this my entire life. And uh, yeah, let's see how it plays out. Buzz? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm safe, taking precautions, being careful. Um, and I'm currently getting ready for a modest sized uh, Dublin Kodai, which Absolutely. will be coming up on Saturday. The Dublin Kodai on Saturday, which, you know, you never know, could be one of the few Kodais this season now. As crazy as that is, we don't know how this is going to look. We don't know what's going to happen. So it's time to look at another empire in chaos. Another empire beginning to beat to the drum of war. That is the first pack in this cycle, which I believe is called the Dominion cycle, which really looks to me to be the kickoff of the clan war. I mean, Exciting presumably times. The, the, the clan war. It is, but like the, this is like, look, at, let's look at some of these cards through that lens. Is this the kickoff for the big conflict? The greatest storyline arc in card game history. Back again. So in that, let's shrug off this bear. And look at this crab, avoid stronghold. Six province strength, cannot be a stronghold province. Action, during a conflict at another province you control, move the contested ring to this province, it is now the attack province. Ugh, void provinces are so good. This one is okay. It's got a powerful effect, but you gotta find a way to get them to attack it. So if they randomly find this on an attack, you know, and you can save it and you can keep saving it, this has some utility on stripping an attack away from your stronghold or something else nasty. So that's good. Um, it might have some virtues in the wall holding deck, but I think that deck's a bit dead. So I don't see this seeing a huge amount of play for that. It's just, it's like if this had a passive benefit and could start face up, I'd be a lot more bullish on this, but it don't. And that's, uh, that's the major issue for me with it. Any other thoughts? Does this... Does this have a, a pseudo talisman of the sun effect allowing you to pull a conflict from your stronghold to this problem? Yes. Yeah, it does. But you have to okay. have got this revealed already and it would still have to be undestroyed. Yeah, I mean, the real yeah. challenge with this is you need to get it revealed so they attack it. It doesn't defend itself. I mean, six problem strength yeah. certainly helps, but it doesn't do anything. And then after yeah. it's been revealed... I don't know about you guys, but if I see my opponent with this province, I'm just going to attack this province again. Because if I'm attacking it, it's just six province strength. And that's not that scary. Like, this is a wonderful province to farm. It is. It is. Um, oh, yeah. I, was just, I mean, Dishonored, they're going to cream themselves when they're just like, ooh, all the purposes. I'd have liked it if it had a passive and it started face up. It was something like bonus yeah. where you're using it, you know? Eminent. Mm. And then basically it'd be yeah. like, yeah. But it's a nice idea, but I don't think it actually will mostly work the payoff you want. And the void slot is so competitive. It's like, oh, let's use the void one. It's like, oh, the, void, the void's a big ask. The void's a big ask. All right, next up, Crane Clan, Pledge of Loyalty. Three province strength, Earth province. Interrupt, when an honored character you control would leave play, discard its honored status token instead. So a save province for the crane at the cost of this ditching an honor token seems pretty decent to me, but again, needs to be face up. Justin. Yeah, I mean, the effect is definitely powerful. Um, but like you said, someone has to attack this. You have to successfully defend it, which is which is far from guaranteed, given that it's only three province strength. Um, and even then, you also have to have an honored character, and the effect of that isn't going to be felt until the following turn when that character is still in play. So, I mean, it's the value that you can potentially gain from it is absolutely enormous. I mean, potentially you could have a five cost character in play forever with turn. Um, 
but I think the odds of that happening are very heavily stacked again. Um, so, yeah, I maybe it could maybe see play in a in a in a highly highly defensive. I can yeah. certainly see this, um, you know, re- repaying the slot. But uh, but yeah, again, it's a province they might never. So, but I don't know. It's it's decent. Is it better than upholding authority? Probably not. Tough one. The one Tough thing one. I'll say about it is, if you have a big fat tower of a Toshimoko or something, I mean, and you've got fate on him, your opponent can't get rid of him. You got this face oh, okay. up, it's just like, ugh, I kill him. I get find some way to discard him, and your opponent's just like, cool. I'll uh, just the honor token instead, and now I'll rehonor him box, you know? And that's, like, just, it'll break your heart. It'll break your heart multiple times. Uh, yeah. And I wonder, are they going to do an effect where you get to reveal a province for a bonus, and then to, to key these cards on? Some sort of, I reveal of my I reveal one of my, my own reveal provinces, something happens. And, yeah. uh, and then now I can switch these guys on reliably. Baz, any thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, everything you've said is spot on. Uh, it is really hard to keep alive to actually get a chance of using it. In addition, um, like if you could save a five cost character with this uh, just once in a game, uh, you know, that's going to have a big impact on that game, assuming there's an extra turn. But, um, you know, you, you put fate on characters when they come into play, uh, unless they're really low cost. So early in the game, this is probably not going to tr- get a chance to trigger. Or if it does trigger, you're probably going to be saving like a one cost or a two cost character. You are right that if they've got some sort of uh, personality kill effect, uh, that this will be great against it. But, you know, how much of that is actually out there, uh, especially against honored characters, mo- far more often you're looking at uh, someone getting dishonored and then that happening to them. It, it's definitely got potential, uh, especially because Earth, you know, you're comparing it with um, uh, Upholding Authority. So, you know, you've got a bit of leeway there. Upholding is fantastic, but... Uh, so I think this will find a little bit of play in decks. Um, and I think if you can trigger it once, it might have enough of effect to be worth playing. But, yeah, that's that's very, very, very situational. Absolutely. All right. Sharing Shinsei's Wisdom for Province Strength. Reaction after this province is revealed, choose a character. Move one fate from that character to another character controlled by the same player. Watering. Baz. Dragonrific. But is it any good? So, yes and no. Um, Ooh, so, a dragon. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, Fe- Feast or Famine is a comparable one. Um, you know, you can take one fate and then move it to another character. Obviously, with uh, Feast or Famine, it has to be destroyed, which is a negative, but you can do it from your opponent and then add it onto yours, which is a positive. Um, with sharing Shinsei's wisdom, when it gets revealed, so it's just when it's revealed, it's not, uh, you know, you don't have to wait for it to be broken, but it's only going to be a once off, essentially, unless you're playing shenanigans. And you. Best cases are to move one fate from one of your character, one of your cheap characters, onto one of your big characters, so they stay around a bit longer, and vice versa for your opponent. Uh, that situation isn't always easy to set up. There will be plenty of times when this card will trigger, uh, will try to trigger, but really won't have anything worthwhile doing, and you'll be sad. Um, but I, I have been testing this. I, I do play my current deck uh, for one specific reason. It is a water province. And right now, Dragon really like if they want to play Keeper, they really like having um, oh that that Temple one. They like their their Air Province to be the one that straightens monks, and having that under Stronghold. So you know you need to you need to look for a Water Province, and there's only really Rally to the Cause and Midnight Revels, so options are limited. And this is an extra option. So this this is a fine province to put in your row. Uh, it's not amazing, but water provinces just need to be playable these days, and this is definitely playable. Yep. Alrighty. So it's all to the good. Uh, now, Ninkatoshi, a unique province, four province strength, city, 
eminent, this province starts the game face up and cannot be turned face down. It cannot be a stronghold province. Each other province gets minus one strength of control by an opponent and plus one strength of control by you or a teammate, earth or water. Justin, it is the lion aggression again. What do you think? Yeah, um, I'm not overwhelmed, I have to say. So, like, this has the problem, the same problem that the Crab Province did to a certain extent. Uh, it, it doesn't help defend itself and is functionally blank apart from that. So this is uh, a very attractive uh, province to attack into. It's fantastically farmable for any kind of honor or dishonor deck. Um, and the payoff isn't that enormous. Um, giving enemy provinces minus one strength certainly makes your breaking very, very efficient. Uh, but the chances are that you're going to swing across and break one of theirs, and they're going to swing right back and break Ninkatoshi. And all you've done in that case is essentially traded one of your incredibly valuable province slots for giving one of their provinces minus one strength, which seems like a terrible, terrible idea. Um, it is a water province, and as Baz was mentioning, you know, water provinces aren't all that wonderful. So, meh. But then, like, Don't Lion also have the Art of War, and that's a water province. And you'll play the Art of War every day over this, I think. So, yeah, I think Ninkatoshi is... Yeah, nice, nice concept. Kind of a swing and a miss, though. Interesting yeah. that they're still occasionally doing unique provinces. It feels like that's a bit of design space that they might try to uh, investigate at some stage, but all the, our packs, they, they've only got one copy of uh, each province. I mean, it'd be a hell of a thing if you're like, oh God, I've got to go buy back a second pack. <laughs> oof, oof. Uh, another one, unique province, five province strength, Kakudaira uh, City. Eminent, this province starts the game face up and cannot be turned face down. It cannot be a stronghold province. After each phase begins, reveal each face down card in this province. Air and Void for the Scorpion Clan. So again, this is one to charge out of, but charge is gone. So it's nice in that you keep flipping up the card in the province. It might show you some extra stuff if you're running a lot of rally cards or dynasty events. Could see some value. Baz, any thoughts? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> I mean, there's a, a low portion of your deck that you actually want face up outside of your dynasty phase. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't get what this is doing. If you could have a quarter of your deck as disguise characters or events, dynasty events. Then 75% of the time this wouldn't work. Yeah. If your deck was half that. Then half the time this wouldn't yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. Unless this is some kind of harbinger for a phoenix archetype yeah. yet to come, I I don't know what this is meant to be doing. Yeah, yeah. there there might be some way of uh, selecting. Uh, actually, we we see a dragon card later on, but that could in theory work for this. But there might be some uh, way for phoenix later to filter what they get and what they're putting yeah. into provinces. Um, in which case th that could be quite good. Um. But even then, you're kind of wondering what you're looking for. You know, how much actual effect are you going to get out of this or what you're trying to burn down to, so. Yeah. yeah. Hard to uh, say. Again, like, just the opportunity cost of including this over either an air or a void province, both of which have fantastic options um, for what is, you know, essentially a vanishingly small chance of, I don't know, like you said, charge is gone. So I guess it's keepers cards and holdings are the only things that would that this would matter this feels it's like it's them. about meant to be about dynasty events this feels like that what's what this card yeah. is about to be about yeah and uh, and you know maybe we'll see something later in the cycle that will make sense for that in which case honestly this card probably should have been pushed to the end of the cycle um but if if we don't see something this cycle and there is an intention then they've got it the wrong way around yeah um, yeah which we, we have seen before. We have seen cards that are just dead on arrival. And then later down the line, the components that put it together are there, which is fine to do if the initial cards that come out have some play. But right now, this doesn't look like it has yeah. any play. 
no, it's going to go with the Viners. We'll think about it later if something relevant comes up. Um, but no, no, no play at the moment. Nice art, though. Nice art. Yeah. Very, very Pretty. nice art. Yeah. All right. Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Uh, city of the Rich Frog. Three province strength city. Eminent. This province starts to gain face up and cannot be turned face down. It cannot be a stronghold province. After setup, fill this province to three cards. When you would refill this province, refill it to three cards instead of one, void or earth. Now, this I think is the first eminent one I've said, oh wow, this is going to see play. This, if you're a blitz deck or a weenie deck, or you're looking to play fast, and you want to see as many cards as possible, as quickly as possible, this is totally worth it. There are some caveats on this. You've got to completely empty it to get trigger that three refill. So you can't leave one holding there, one rally event there or anything. You've got to basically get the lot out. But this is such a stonking card. This is like one of those pure dangerous acceleration cards that makes some decks really a lot more reliable. This is one I, yeah, I, I look at this one hard as well. Baz, any thoughts? This, this needs to be a, a promo somewhere so I can add another six copies to put them in all of my decks for all of the clans. Uh, yeah, I, I like this a lot. It, it isn't necessarily something I'm going to play in everything, but four provinces going up to essentially six provinces is a really big di- deal for your dynasty draw. You know, that's, it makes a big difference. Huge difference. Justin? It's maybe, maybe worth going through how this actually works. Yeah. So um, you do, so you, you put you down mulligan your four based cards, on four. your normal yeah. four cards. Uh, you do your mulligan. Uh, you do your dynasty mulligan, you do your fate mulligan, then you add two additional cards to City of the Rich Frog. So that's how it works on setup. And as you said before, um, only when the, the, the province is completely empty does it refill to three. But uh, for those who serve decks, for Phoenix Bird decks, um, potentially for holding decks, Actually, no, holding decks aren't going to be great with this because it's not going to refill. But I would say those who serve and Phoenix Bird, um, those are the two decks that get a get a huge boost from yeah. uh, from this. Don't yeah, compl- I mean, I'm, don't completely dis- I'm discount the holding decks using this stuff. Sorry, don't completely discount the holding decks using this because you're going no, to no. Actually, next I, card wouldn't, because... I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. There's, there are ways of moving yeah. things around. And so, also, if you get some fire and forget holdings, this is just like woohoo! Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah, just chuck them out. Just uh, as you're saying. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm playing this in my current dragon deck, the one I'm taking over the weekend, and the reason I'm playing it is because uh, Nitten Master, um, uh, Togashi Mitsu, and Miramoto Ratsugu are fantastic characters, but most of everything else is kind of trash. So I'm just playing a deck that gets down to those three characters all the time. Uh, and that's the kind of approach I've taken. And but that can be extended to basically any deck. Um, if you've got, you know, ten good characters or you know a handful of good characters in your deck, playing City the Rich Frog and a bunch of other things that we're going to talk about soon yeah. are going to let you burn down and make sure you get those quality draws. Um, like this, this pack and this card is a major feature of it. Uh, is really giving us a lot of dynasty control. It's letting us get what we want when we want. And that's that's a big deal. So yeah, I'm expecting to see this. Okay, so Colex13 has uh, a question in uh, chat. So how does Windswept Yurt work with this card? So uh, just need to call up the uh, the precise text on Windswept Yurt. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything crazy about it. Uh, it goes in because it refills off. face up. So you refill the province face up. So I presume. Um, you would refit to oh. so we've got John saying it won't refill the card unless it's empty. Even with one up here, John. And now we have to wait for the delay. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Um, I don't know. So getting to fade, getting to and refill this province face up. Ah, uh, right, okay. So John's saying refill the province face up is just directions on how to handle the refill, not an instruction to refill. So that being the case, it would not refill until 
uh, unless it was completely empty. So if you, so the last card yurt was, yeah, is a yurt. If yurt was the final card in Windswept Frog in City of the Rich Frog, it would refill to three, and yeah, those yeah. would be faced up. Yeah, other, otherwise okay. you take all of the zero cards you're not refilling with and make sure all of those zero cards are face up. Yeah, Indeed. Okay, so... Um, That'd yeah. be fun, though, uh, wouldn't it? It's just like, oh, three, uh, you know, those who serve, play out a guy, play out a guy, pop my yurt, woo, three more cards, woo. I, I think it's going to take people a little bit of time to get used to the setup for this, the way you do the mulligan, the way you basically that you've done both mulligans before you actually add those extra two cards. I think we're going to see a lot of people uh, initially mulliganing six cards or putting in those extra two cards and looking at them before they do yeah. their uh, conflict. Yeah. Or and, even playing that's, that's a card. That's how George calls straight yeah. away. Yeah. Like I can see a lot of mistakes being made about this one because it alters standard setup. And uh, yeah, and we'll we'll get used to it and we'll learn. Uh, but yeah, keep keep an eye on it early. Absolutely, absolutely, indeed. So it's one to to learn how to use kids. All right, first of the dynasty events, recall defenses. One cost rally. After this card is revealed in the province, add the top card of your dynasty deck to the province face up. Action: move a card from one of your provinces to your stronghold province. I love this card. This card was the one we were begging for early on as a way to put a stronghold, put a holding on a stronghold, and then just always have a holding in play, not have to mess around with some things. Maybe put a really key or important holding in there. Maybe something like a Cooney Lab or a Funeral Pyre, where you're just like, yeah, that's my engine. It's just there now. I'm super happy about it. There is another card we're going to discuss, which kind of puts this little squirt of lemon juice in the eye of this one, but this is a phenomenal card. That is badly hurt by what's going to happen to the meta. But if this card, the other card didn't exist, this type of war, this card would be, oh, I'd be super excited about it. I th even as is, I'm very excited about it. But uh, it's it's uh, it's a really, really cool card. And the rally effect. So I think the math has been done and they... People are saying up to six rally cards are good, or up to nine are good, is it? Possibly up to nine, yeah. yeah. Between six and nine somewhere seems to be the maths. Uh, and I think good deck builders will find rally cards that they are happy to see flip up, stick them in their deck, and operate off effectively a 31-card deck with some optional effects you're comfortable having. Now, uh, uh, I, when, yeah. when, when we're talking about six to nine, that's to get a low chance of... Um, a not double rally. getting non rally card, yeah. yeah. But some of the some of the rally cards, as we'll see, are fantastic. Like you wouldn't care if that's all you saw. Yeah. So that, that changes. So that. the rally effect won't trigger off a rally, as I recall. Correct. Yeah. So if I recall defenses and I flip a second recall defenses, I get them both, but I do not get a third a third card flipped out from the rally effect. Yeah. So the key part here is um, rally triggers when you reveal. Uh, and after you trigger rally, you then take the top card and put it in the province face up. So at no point is it actually in the province face down to get revealed. Yeah. If that makes sense. I definitely think you want to run this with about maybe nine plus holdings to make sure this always has a target when it shows up. But yeah, I like this card a lot. I like this card a lot. If If you had no holdings, would you play it? If all the other rally cards were... Like uh, if I couldn't find, if like early on right now maybe, but I've got really good. I'm crab. Like I've got really good holdings. So yeah, of course. I'm of gonna course. play. I'm gonna play. Like there's plenty of holdings. I'd be like, yeah, I'll toss them in the stronghold. The one that makes it a real pain to attack my stronghold. Cool. Yeah, I'll absolutely throw that one on there. You know, or I'll throw on a you know Cooney Lab, and I'll uh, have the Cooney Lab for as long as I need it, or I throw on a Funeral Pyre, have as long as I need it, throw on an Iron Mine, and make sure someone can't blow it up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, this it's, does mean you can move. A holding off a broken province as well, which yes. can be a big deal. And save it. And you can also you can like you can stack those holdings up, you know. Um oh, that's actually a good point. Because yeah. if you get a recall defenses and you reveal a holding, you can then rebuild another holding onto the recalled defenses, right? Because uh, you're replacing the card in the province. Yeah, and then you'll end up with two holdings on that particular province, which could be. Key. Which you can even move, like you can have two hold. You give two recall defense, you get two holdings. You can move two of them into your stronghold, 
And the other yeah, thing you yeah, can do with course. this, this doesn't just work with holdings. If you've got a character, you don't want someone blown up, you can move it onto your stronghold. And then make it out of your stronghold yeah. problems? If wow. you need to. <laughs> uh, and if there's a character, like there are sometimes characters who might be useful to have in a province to show up. Yeah. I'm just, or... gonna, I'm just gonna save this guy for later. He's just gonna go in my stronghold. If I need him yeah, later so... on, out he'll come. You can't blow him up. <laughs> you know. Oh, can this target itself? Yes, but not well, not itself, but another copy of itself. Okay, so yeah, if you got two of these uh, for some reason, no holdings, yeah. you're willing to, you could move one off to your stronghold and then use it a bit later okay that's kind of cool yeah. all right we'll, we'll have to keep an eye for for kind of weird interactions like that but it's kind of fun yeah, yeah I, great card love it all right kikiji yoshi it's the second kikiji yoshi five cost two military six politics three glory courtier daimyo imperial reaction after this character wins a political conflict as the attacker choose up to x characters where x is the number of face-up provinces you control dishonor each of those characters so dishonor on all your families at the mere cost of having a bunch of face of provinces. So that's interesting. I wonder if there's going to be an effect that reveals a province because that's pretty strong as an effect goes. And that guy, he's going to win a political conflict because he's six going in nine when honored. So he's very likely to win on the attack. Uh, Justin, any thoughts? Yeah, he's very, very good. Um, so um, yeah, so he rep I saw he he gives Crane obviously uh, when a different named character comes out, it, um, you're probably going to get uh, another awesome character, especially if they cost five. The downside is that you have to pick which one of those characters you're going to play. Um, and uh, yeah, this guy super good, I think. Um, Broken provinces are still revealed, so later on in the game, he is going to go over, win a political conflict, and dishonor two, three, maybe even four characters. That's uh, that's a significant uh, change in board state, and uh, he just sets up Crane's suite of like murder cards, uh, like Duel to the Death, Noble Sacrifice. He just sets those up. Yeah, he is a scary guy to be facing. He really oh, is, absolutely. You know? absolutely, absolutely, and like you're going nine, he's going, he's coming over, and he's probably honored to Ukraine. You're like nine mm. politics. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. What, what do I do about that? Nothing. This is lame. Yeah. You know? So uh, yeah, he's he's just a he's a, just a huge setup piece for Crane murder decks. Yeah. Now he um, is competing with the other Kikiji Yoshi, who isn't universal yes. by any means, but is a very strong piece in his own right. Though a different sort of piece. This is a far more kind of aggressive, this is a control, yeah, controlly, yeah, you know, control like, kind of get in your face, Yoshi. Um, you know, the the old the old Yoshi required the favor to discard. He does, and that's you know, correct. The seems so... pretty high on Shoujo at the moment. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean. Uh, like I think this Yashi, and obviously this Yashi is he's, he's less explosive, but he's far more. Mm. So if if that's you know if that's the, the the thing that really excites you, then you're going to be super happy to see this guy. And just it's a tremendous amount of pressure on your opponent in terms of like the courtier deck just gone, because there is that kind of dishonor crane courtier deck that sort of it hasn't coalesced yet, but I definitely feel like it it exists. Um, and this guy is just a finisher for that deck. It's just like, designer three guys, and you're like, ooh. That's a problem yeah, at, at the end of the time, turn. Like, it's, you have to have eminent provinces or have had a couple of provinces revealed on your side before you actually... If, if you have an eminent scary, one so. and they don't, they they break it cool and they break another province, you got two. They hit a third province, he's got three, and three is a lot. Yeah, you know? but if they break all of your provinces, then that's a problem. <laughs> it is, but they're like it, it's like as you're getting closer to beating the crane player, he's getting more powerful. You know, like the more reveal provinces, and again, if we get a card that reveals provinces, his stock goes up even more. Like he's a good card, he's a dangerous card, he's a scary card. That's good. That's a good thing. Yeah, like I, I would not be, I would not be pleased to see this guy across the table from me. Yeah. I would be worried. You know, because it's a suite of setup. And see, this is guys. The person with this deck is probably playing, might be playing duels to the death. 
is probably certainly playing uh, uh, the, the sacrifice card on a bridge, noble sacrifice, noble sacrifice and yeah. then might be splashing scorpion and running uh, some other funky Viking stuff. Swim. Yeah, maybe if they yeah. can if they can find a way to manipulate dials. Yeah, absolutely. But they're they're going to be a dueling deck. Yeah, because they're going to be playing duel to the death. Absolutely. So manipulating dials. And maybe a Dishonor deck and going, oh, you bid one. Cool. Cool. That's yeah. awesome for me. Cheers. I just want a bit too. I mean, it's yeah. worth noting as well. Like, I mean, this is an ability that, that affects the board as well. Yeah. So against a lot of clans, he's going to go across, win his conflict, and take three to four skill points yeah. off the board. Um, so he's... Yeah, I, I, I don't like the way the ability is a, a reaction to winning, though. Um, I, I hate seeing those. I Like, I really want ones that help me win the conflicts. Now, I know... With six politics, six politics and it. three glory, yeah, it, it certainly uh, helps. It certainly helps. But uh, yeah. if, like, if it was an ability when you had more political skill than your oh, opponent, or oh, Joe Bass, like, like I, an, an automatic ability like that yeah. is just is just is oh, yeah, no, no, no. horrible. Playing against yeah. Taturi and Haturi Hatura early in the game was rough because it was just like I can't beat this guy. I can't stop this guy. He's just coming over and he's going to smash my province, and that's I can't stop him winning. So, like, a really big body like this is a pain, especially if you're a, yeah. an off stat clan. It's like, okay, I'm crab. I don't have 10 politics to throw against this guy. And even if I did, they he's got other stuff I don't have as well. 10 politics yeah, in but my I mean, entire deck. Yeah. My, my, my point here is that this particular Yoshi isn't a problem solver. He's a... I, I guess he's a boulder. He's like, a once you get him rolling... Once you, once you get him rolling then you know he's gonna crush stuff um but you you got to get that first push going uh, and like we're talking about the dueling decks if i was in one of those dueling decks that i was gonna go for duel to death i'd be probably going for one of the chunkier military bushi instead um so i mean everything we've said so far like lots of applications for yoshi i do think he's a fantastic character not quite sure what deck i'd put him in immediately uh, but i'm sure there will be one in time yeah absolutely absolutely all right cycle of rebirth uh event zero cost action choose a card in a province shuffle this card and that card into their owner's decks refill each province emptied by this face effect face up max one per round dynasty uh, event uh so holding solution slash i don't want to deal with that character solution baz any thoughts uh like you said and also the hey this draw isn't great let's try that again um it's it's very very cool. Uh, I have again. I've I've played this in my deck. I got a few games testing in. Um, in some cases, you know, I flipped two and uh, ended up shuffling both back into the deck using one of them, which is cool. Um, in other cases, I saw my opponent's draw, discarded one of their cards. On one occasion, it flipped them into something better. On one occasion, it flipped them into something worse. So you know, it, like just because you're getting rid of a problem doesn't mean it's going away, especially because you shuffle those cards into the deck first. Uh, it certainly will make your early draws better, in theory, uh, if you're willing to, to give up the possibility of passing fate. So, uh, again, right now I'm playing a deck that's very focused on getting certain characters, and playing the three cycles help me get down to the characters I want, which is cool. But later in the game, you end up with a few of these, which is a bit strange. So as the game progresses, if you keep using it, you're more likely to get more turning up later. Um, but that said, like if you get two, you don't really care. It's only when you get three that you're down a card, essentially. And even then, you're going to cycle into some others. Uh, yeah, I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm, I don't want to be too hot on it, as it were. But I could certainly imagine players being pissed off about this card when you know the, the card that they need to not screw over their draw gets discarded by it. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if it's possible to turn this into a negative play experience, which is, of course, the gold standard for cards. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Akoto... So, oh, sorry. Just, just, some... a, just a question. Yeah. So dynasty, dynasty events can only be used during the dynasty phase, correct? Correct. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you are giving up the, the chance of passing fate, probably, using this. So that's a big negative. But yeah, um, for just a, so it, a 
getting rid of a critical card or flipping into a critical card. Yeah, the, the interesting bit I found from this is if you're going first, you get the first opportunity to cycle. And I that normally yeah. makes me look at my opponents and I'm often willing to pass or to lose passing faith yeah. just to mess with their draw. And if I'm going second, I'm probably not going first. And then I'm more likely to use it on myself than to improve my own draw. Uh, yeah, it's, it's after they pass first. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I've done I've done the same. Yeah, with Bustling Academy in Phoenix, uh, which is a very very similar effect. Um, so yeah, yeah. So it's I think it's I think it's a good card. I really like it. Very flavorful as well for Dragon. Yeah, cool. uh, I could definitely see this had rally for a while and lost rally very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, um, maybe maybe I'd be pushing a little bit too much, but uh, I wouldn't have minded rally on it because a lot of the time, like half the time, you don't use it. You just it just ends up with a dead draw because you want to get that passing fate, and you've got an okay draw so far. But so I, I can understand why there's no rally there, but I, I don't think it would have been too pushed if it was. Yeah. All right, Kodo Reserve Company, four cost, five military, one politics, two glory. Bushi army, no attachments except weapon, always a good thing. Rally. Action. During a conflict, if there's a battlefield in play, not at the conflict, in play, choose a participating character you control, move this character to the conflict. If you do, move the chosen character home. So, that's a big Lion Camp character because Lion love, love high printed strength military. So I can see some players going, you know what? For five printed military, I just might play that because that's pretty good way of the lion. And it's rally, so he just makes my deck kind of smaller. So yeah, you know, maybe, you know, it's got rally. It's like, whoop, I flip the card, flip another card. That seems all right, you know, that seems all right. So yeah, like big guy, okay body, but as rally. So yeah. Uh, Justin, any thoughts? Um, yeah, the the card is underwhelming. Um, rally is perhaps the saving grace if it has one. Um, but I don't know. I there seems to be an awful lot of people saying that rally cards are absolutely automatic. They're that they're auto includes. Um, and I actually, I my my hot, I strongly disagree. Actually. Um, that rally cards are automatic includes. Um, Tell us more. Yeah, no, oh, sure, sure. Okay, so rally. I mean, it's it's a pure efficiency stat. Okay, so obviously cycling is good. We we know this. We've we've seen that this from as far back in Jesus. What was it? Ice Age when cantrips came into uh, into Magic. Um, so from an from an efficiency point of view, rally is uh, is a is a is a great keyword. Yeah involved with including a rally card so all the rally cards we've seen so far um and in fact all the rally cards uh are not overwhelmingly good like they're not good independent they're not yeah they're, they're just not good independent of their ind independent of the rally keyword so you are including substandard cards in order to um marginally increase your draw efficiency uh for other cards Really? Because, like, there's no downside. Uh, that's no, that's not entire. No, that's not true at all. Uh, because if you include a rally card, that's a card that that's another card in your deck. If you're if you're adhering, like, if you're playing rally cards, you're adhering to to efficiency. You're playing a forty card deck more than likely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you include a rally card, that is a card that actually has you know much much more you know much that has a different functionality that you cannot include. Um, now that this flattens out a bit in the current version of L5R, because so so hold on, let's the roll, okay. roll it back. You've got four provinces. You reveal all four provinces. One is a rally. Mm -hmm. Rally reveals a fifth card. Sure. You now have five cards, yeah. of which you have the Okoto Reserve Company as an example. Okay. Yeah, which um, is okay. If you take rally, well, you, off you still card. if okay. you take rally out. If you take the Okoto Reserve Company out. You still have four cards, so it's a pure bonus. But you basically take the worst three cards out of your deck and put the Kodo Reserve Company in instead. You see, but if, if all you did was see, discard, but that's not how deck that's not how deck construction works. 
and I would I would caution people against this. Like index, you need a spread of certain values. You need a spread of functionalities, which, um, which is fine. But if you could play yeah. a thirty-seven card deck, would you? I, well, if, if I could play a thirty-seven card deck, I might. And if you put three rally cards in, you essentially are. Yeah, but it's I. But th this idea that they're auto includes is. I, st I, I is is false. Okay, like the the example I would the, the example I would give is back in old five R. There was a card called Second City, which was uh, a region, which is a bit just like a, an event or something that would turn up, and that as an action it allowed you to turn a face down card of one of your provinces face up, or yeah, just basically replace a card in one of your provinces and turn that card face up. And when that card was released, there was absolute uproar and outrage. And everybody said, this card is an automatic include in every deck forever for the rest of time. Uh, and again, at that time, I said, no, this is a really bad card. It doesn't actually, all it's doing is, is giving you, you know, a, a mathematically fairly insignificant increase to your overall draw efficiency. And this card will, is, you know, it's, it's good for combo decks, but it's actually not good for anything else because you have opportunity costs involved, which are taking out other functional uh, uh, parts of your deck in order to include this. Uh, and, you know, over the course of several months, uh, Second City left all decks and eventually ended up only in combo decks. Now, this version of L5R is slightly different from the old version of L5R, um, but the... Uh, the overall kind of the overall theoretical framework is still the same. You still have to remove certain functionalities from your deck, like certain cards. You have to take them out in order to include rally cards. Now, it's fine. Like I said before, it absolutely increases your overall efficiency, but it there but there are still costs involved in including this at a deck construction level. Okay, so. I'm not saying that rally cards are bad, far from it. I think they're very good, but they still have to be considered uh, on a case by case basis. Um, and you know this this kind of idea that there is you know a completely new um, and overwhelming doctrine that rally cards have to be included because they you know fundamentally improve your deck just by being there is, I think a mistake. and yeah, like you just have to consider cards on a case by case basis. That's all I'm saying. Like I don't, I I do not believe they are auto includes at all. So there we go. That's the hot take. The kind of five minute long or ten minute long. Um, um, the one thing I'll say is, if you can, uh, if you can get an okay battlefield card into play, uh, find it from somewhere. Um, I know there's a couple, and you got found a command. This is okay then. Like you can basically favorable ground is yeah. uh, one of the ones that's constantly played. Yeah, like if you have two characters attacking and your reserve company's bad at home, and the one of the the one of the characters has found a command, and you send the other guy home and move the reserve company in, you can ready them. So it's okay. Like it's I don't know if there's enough. I don't know if there's an eminent battlefield yet, or there might be an eminent battlefield in the future, but definitely keep an eye on this card, and it will see some play because of the rally, uh, rally goes. Uh, by Shikai in the chat is arguing that, like, you know, uh, you know, paying less than 40 card deck is good, and it is if you can manage it. I understand what Justin's saying, though, but yeah, there's some value here. But let's get on to the Garanto Guardian. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, just <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to go back okay again going back to old 5r do you yeah. remember when old 5r deck construction changed from 30 cards to 40 cards and uh, everybody sort of yes a, yeah sort of, everybody yes. breathed a huge sigh of relief for two reasons one being that 30 card decks were far more likely to be generous mm -hmm. uh, and the other reason was people could not fit uh, enough interesting fun cards into 30 yep that uh, eventually decks just eventually yeah a decks decks became like because efficiency became the was the was the overwhelming mantra every deck was almost identical because you were playing the same power cards uh, in 30 cards and once okay. it moved to 40 cards then you could play like it exploded the 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 range of possible decks because the efficiency simply wasn't as overwhelming okay all, so... all of this all of this sounds quite alarming so i'm not quite sure where you're going oh no i'm efficiency isn't the be-all and end-all 
Like it's it's hugely like uh, like if as a as a game player, efficiency is hugely important. Um, but you know, from a from like a, taking a step back and looking at it from a design point of view, efficiency is very much a two edged sword. Too much efficiency and you know viable deck construction options really start to narrow down enormously. Uh, interesting decisions start to disappear. Um, and uh, it's something you need to be aware of. But again, from a deck construction point of view, again, rally cards, they still need to be, a, they still need to be kind of uh, judged on their own merits. So like, it's, this is, I'm sure it's an, I'm sure it's like, it's, it's an argument that at least in my head will go on for, 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 some, for some time more. But, uh, uh, I was just, go I, was just doing, I was just doing a bit of research there. Prepared Ambush by the Lion Clan is a one from Rock of Gun of War. It's a line at zero cost line attachment battlefield. You attach it to an unbroken province. There's limited one battlefield attachment pro province. During a conflict of attached province, you may play each character in your provinces. As oh, hold, if hold, it were... hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You know that's this pack, right? Uh, oh, it is. All right, sort of. Excellent. All right, pretty. I was just there, doing research. There are other battlefields. There, yeah. So there is another battlefield that uh, Total Warfare. I think people get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one's come out already. It's like a yeah. two cost and it's one. Two cost. And uh, they they also have two other line holdings. So yeah. uh, the what is it? There's one that gives a plus one to people who are honored, uh, which no one ever plays. And yep. then there's the staging ground that came out way back that lets you uh, reveal extra cards. Uh, so those are all battlefields. So there are some, um, and yeah, we're we're beginning to see a few more attachments that we'll get into later. So there, there are Excellent. more options. For that. Excellent. All right, Garanto Guardian, four cost, four military, three politics, three glory. Bushi, keep a roll only. After this character wins, wins a conflict as the defender, resolve a ring effect that matches the attached province's element as if you were the attacking player. Justin. He's really cool. That's it. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, like, I've been here. Yeah. I've been here with this sort of effect. It's okay in Crab where there are a bunch of other effects that let you uh, let you win, do stuff while on the defense. Uh, yeah. Were this in Crab? Oh, yeah, I'd be all over this guy. But Phoenix yeah. have a lot less, have a lot less invested in that, you know? Uh, he yeah, is really I mean, good defending Shameful uh, Display. He's really good defending Shameful Display. Yeah, as Baishi Pai points out, you know, like he, like he's he's very very like he is very very good, um, but he is a four cost character that you are keeping almost exclusively for defense, and that is a worrying. Um, so pa pacifist decks, yeah. I guess. For for pacifist decks, absolutely, and like those decks are those decks are starting to come out. Uh, at last, finally, a, a, a new Phoenix archetype. Um, he's very, yeah, he's very, very strong in that archetype. Like he's going to discourage an awful lot of people from attacking if they can't be sure that they're going to they're going to win the conflict. Um, so I don't know. It's one of those kind of strange situations. If he discourages someone from attacking at all, you are you've paid probably six fate to force them to skip conflicts. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, he doesn't do anything to help you win, uh, apart from his stats, which for four cost are fairly mediocre. Well, actually, they're not. They're they're fine. They're they're good stats. Uh, and he curls up into a ball if he gets dishonored, which is a, a real world. But I'm I'm not sure I would play him just yet. I, I think, think that he's. He's kind of like the Phoenix courtiers that we've been talking about a while. There's like a bunch of courtiers like Phoenix keep getting that haven't quite clicked yet. And eventually they will. But the Phoenix Bushi thing is another line where they're all, you know, high glory characters that seem chunky enough. Um, and I guess there's a bit of a defending thing going on with them. But yeah, they, they really suffer if they get dishonored, which is always a big problem for them. Uh yeah, there might be a deck down the line, and it's probably in a Sawamori Sado deck. But yeah, right, yeah, definitely. Right now, who knows? Yeah, he's like I think he's like I think he's really good. I just I'm not sure like that that particular Phoenix deck kind of lacks a win condition at the moment, and he's an awful lot to invest in a deck. He's an, like it's an awful lot of fate to invest for a card that is simply going to stall a few turns. Um. 
I'm just undecided. Like, I haven't actually played him yet, so it he could be way, way better than I'm giving him credit for. But, uh, yeah. I hope he's good. All right. Governor's Spy, three cost, one military, four politics, one glory, courtier. During a conflict in which this character is participating, choose a player. Turn each card in that player's provinces face down. Then look at them and put each of those cards into one of that player's provinces, such that each province ends up with at least one card. All right. So holding meta. Any other shenanigans occur to you, Baz? Uh, and so, yeah, if you're attacking, uh, you can look at everything and make sure you discard the right card and mess with the next draw. Similarly, if you're defending, you can make sure that whatever is good for you uh, is going to stay around. Uh, John was explaining to me that there is some weird interaction where if the City of the Rich Frog is out, it'll have three cards, possibly, assuming nothing got made out of it. Or no, yeah. Or if it was fully refilled, so it doesn't always happen. A lot of time you just discard at the end. So, but you can you can take those extra two cards and put them in another province, and that'll leave just one card in City of the Rich Frog. And then if you discard that, it'll refill the three. And oh my god, yeah. we're milling things. But you can do his effect either attacking or defending. It's just, you just choose a player. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like he's good holding meta. Like this seems to be there does seem to be a little sub theme of uh, screw with holdings running through this pack. Uh, a little bit of stuff that goes oh, to get rid of those holdings. Uh, you don't, know, don't, don't, don't take it personal. No, it's, no, I, I don't. I just I there's definitely a this gets rid of uh, holdings. Yeah, but I think I think this pack is less about uh, holdings, and I think it's more about dynasty control. Yeah. Giving giving more control over what's happening in the the dynasty draws. Yeah, but this is and this is an example of that. This is another tool that lets you go. I need a way to switch off that holding. This switches off that holding. You know, which is a good thing in a lot of ways. But it's just a it's another way to look at it. Uh, I think um, you know, the uh, basically the. Um, yeah, the holding deck I don't think is going to work, but anyway, uh, the crab kind of Kaya wall deck that, that was sort of nice idea is kind of nice idea at this point. It, it ain't going to work, but that's not so. What work. what happens with uh, the stronghold? Which one? Uh, so will this let you put cards into their stronghold province? Uh, yes, but each card has to have at least one card, so you need. Uh, your... Oh, and you can't you can't move the stronghold already there, but it yeah, could mess with the crab you... even more by moving cards. holdings off it. So <laughs> technically, no, technically you might have four cards to muck with five. Turn each card in the province's face down. Look at them. No, you'd actually be able to put in like you could if you had like four cards in the provinces. You turn them all face down. You go, okay, I've got to put these into my five provinces now. Um. So one of them will be empty. Well, I think I think that stronghold is considered to be in the province, but you're not allowed to move it. Yeah. Well, it's got a stronghold. Oh yeah. So, but but it does mean if you have extra cards, like with City of the Rich Frog, you can actually move cards up onto the stronghold. Do you, uh, does your stronghold go? Put... Stronghold will always stay there. It can never be moved. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you if you have six cards, yeah, if you're defending, for example, you can then take two of those and put them onto your stronghold province. That that could be fun. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So if you city apart the from that, frog, you did yeah, a three cost one four courtier, like yeah, great. White horde vanguard four cost five military two politics bushy cavalry army one glory no attachments except weapon always nice. During the first conflict each round, opponent's card effects cannot bow this character or move it. Ooh, you know, big, chunky, sort of hard to deal with. Yeah, I mean, you can throw a weapon on it or something. Give it a bonsai. You know, it's a good vector for doing stuff. It's expensive enough for unicorn for the most part. Yeah, it's all right. Any other thoughts? 
it's really good on the attack every second turn yeah. and not very good on every yeah. other turn. But yeah. hey, unicorn, way at the unicorn. Woo! He's, he's a great tower the, half of the time. Card exists. All right, now let's get on to the card. They're going to roundabout for a bit. A season of war, one cost event rally. After this card is revealed in the province, add the top card of your dynasty deck to the province face up. Action: discard each card it in each province, refilling each province face up. End the dynasty phase. There is then there is an additional dynasty phase during which players do not collect fate. Um. Okay, this card. The Caillou Wall deck was kind of this theoretical deck, which kind of went, okay, I'm going to try and set up this array of holdings so that there's a Caillou Wall holding on each one of my provinces, and I put one into my stronghold somehow, and I have this this kind of fortress that you attack into, and nasty effects happen, and I can, I can change which one. I kind of set up a fortress. That's the kind of, the theory of the card, right? And this card kind of goes, well, fuck that. Just uh, whatever you're doing, yeah, back in the deck, get a random selection of cards. Fine. Fine. Um, it also goes, hey, you've got a holding or something on your province. Shuffle that in as well. And that's gone too. So this card is a rally card, so as we've discussed. Can be seen in some numbers as sort of free. Can be seen as a way to make your deck smaller. And really badly mucks with your the holding deck, which is completely a side effect of what this card is actually about, which is about kind of controlling sometimes a bad flip for you or a really good flip for your opponent or just like gives you a reset. Interesting mini game with this is going to be when your opponent flips his cards, you flip some cards, you've got this here and you're like, huh, maybe I'll pass. Which is risky, but you might be like, you know, I think I might be able to get through. Okay, I've got some conflict characters in hand. I can work off my hand this turn. I'm just going to pass and gain a fate. And if he sees the wars, well, I guess I, you know, I'm up a fate. And he's down a fate. So that's something. But this card is going to see quite an amount of play for a while. It's If your opponent flips an amazing flip, you're like, yep, yeah, toss that away. Or if your opponent's got a ton of holdings, you're like, mm, I don't want you to have a ton of holdings this turn. Flip that away. Uh, it's an incredibly strong card. And a lot of people saying, I think this is going to get restricted. Yeah, maybe. Baz, thoughts? You've been playing with this. I have. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've done a mini rant already that's uh, up on our YouTube channel. Uh, so I, I definitely have concerns. And I think we've addressed some of those when we're talking about Rally. We haven't mentioned those who serve yet. This is a yeah. big deal with this card. And you've mentioned holdings. And yeah. the, a season of war is a particularly good meta choice against uh, those who serve and holdings. So with those who serve, this, you actually want to play a season of war just in case your opponent's season of war pops up. So you can a season of war, their season of war. So then in the next dynasty phase, you can those who serve. Otherwise, yeah. you play those who serve and they season the war and then this phase ends and you need to start a new one, which, you know, it kind of, it kind of kills. Um, and if they don't, it. if they don't have a season of war, you can always go. You know, I'll have my great turn with. Uh, you have a season of war, and you're playing those to serve. You go, okay. Well, I make my three or four guys, and I've still got some fates, so I'll just season of war. And if I, if I make one or two more guys with that fate, I save. Yeah, yeah, and I mean it's got rally, so like you're gonna flip an extra card on it, so you're it isn't gonna impact your draw. Um, now, yeah, as I said, I, I've had a bit of a rant on Rally. I have concerns about it. Um, and I was criticized a few times, um, both in comments and on at least one podcast, um, on the idea that, hey, look, Rally and Season Wars specifically do what they intended to do. They uh, give more agency during the dynasty phase. They give us more control and more consistency of what's happening in the Dynasty decks. And yes, I 100% agree with that. That is how I am playing it. So the reason I've got three Season of War and the reason I've got three Cycle um, is because I want to be able to control my Dynasty draw better. It has been a huge asset for me in my deck. My deck is running so much smoother now that I've got more control over what cards I am getting down to. Um, so the... My issue isn't in how it plays. Like I, I play, I will play these cards because they're good cards. They give me more control over over my deck. They let me play the cards I want to, and it, 
uh, of particular note, it lets you play kind of team decks. Like if you want to play a Taturi deck where you get the Taturi Emerald Champion out and you know you have some neat combos that you're going to do with that guy, you're able to do it now. Like you can far like with City of Rich Frog, you're seeing six cards on your first turn and possibly six turn on your next turn if you get a good draw. Season of War, you can discard everything and draw again. You've got Rally flipping more cards. Like we're gonna get through far more of the deck. We're gonna have more chance to see what we want to see, uh, which is great. Um, so like I understand what the approach is here. The games are gonna be a lot faster, I think, because you're gonna get down to a lot more powerful characters. We're going to be seeing a lot more options and the decks are going to be a lot more consistent. Now, is that a problem? Maybe. Um, it definitely has made the game more fun for me because there's <laughs> more things I can do during the dynasty phase. And as I said, like I'm consistently getting a uh, knit and master out turn one against the right opponents. I'm consistently getting Mitsu, you know, on the second or third turn when I need to close games. And uh, hey, that's that's fun. Is it good for the game? Yeah, that's a different question. Absolutely. It this also loads your discard pile, which yep. is definitely no, we, don't have, we don't have as many decks now. I, I think I assume Justin, you're maybe looking at the Phoenix Phoenix still Fushichos. Oh, Fushichos. Yeah, yeah. This is like. Yeah, like it's it, Crab and uh, Phoenix are the, the two where this can be put to genuinely proactive use um, just by filling up your discard pile with either holdings or just, yeah, characters. And City of the Rich Frog turbocharges this quite severely. But um, yeah, I mean, but you also, you also run the risk of decking out incredibly fast. Um, with uh, both players, with both players very likely playing a season of war. And if you're playing City of the Rich Frog, uh, you can be out of Dynasty deck on turn three quite easily. So you do need to be a little careful. Um, you, can have a, you, can uh, have a, you can have a little cycle as a treat, you know, but not too much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, one of the things, actually, one of the things that I, don't, I, that I haven't seen discussed much is the impact this has on turn one and mm. uh, the way that people generally build their decks now. So... A season of war, like people are talking about this, you know, this decreases randomness. Yeah, well, it can, uh, and it can massively increase randomness as well, especially at the start of the game. So after your mulligan, you uh, presumably have a well set up uh, turn one. If your opponent flips a season of war on turn one and then activates it, your mulligan is out the window immediately. And if you are running a deck with quite a number of expensive characters you could very easily find yourself in a catastrophic situation where your only option on turn one is to buy a four cost character you know especially if you're sitting across from a crab player yeah just licking his lips, just licking <laughs> his lips and eyeing that you know way of the crab so i can see what they were going with with this card um i think it has an awful lot of unintended consequences that yeah. uh, we're going to see play out like i think i think dynasty decks have to get cheaper in order to react to, to turn one variants um uh i can definitely see this one being a oh dear or this 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 did a little bit more than we were hoping uh card yeah actually, and uh, like my, my I mean, expectation is this will be in every deck yeah the, so that, that the means holding decks and the, those who serve decks are yeah this card can completely bite you in the ass as well. Like, you know, your opponent passes first, you're forced into a season of war for some reason because you're, you know, your dynasty phase isn't all that great. Your opponent passes again. You've spent a fate, they've gained two fate. Uh, it's, a, it's a horror show. Or, you know, or your opponent seasons of war and you get an absolutely garbage flip. Uh, yeah. Like there are, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's a card with a lot of far-reaching implications. Uh, like I'm totally on board with uh, increasing um, player agency during the dynasty phase, but like what you were saying, Baz, was actually kind of worrying, and actually was the kind of thing, the one of the exact kind of things I was, I was talking about was that it was yeah, yeah, it was just like you know uh, I'm enjoying the game an awful lot more because I get to see all my most powerful cards on cue every single time, all the time. Um, so but when you were talking about that thirty card deck scenario, like. This is what I thought you were building up to. Like those are all scary consequences that yeah. may maybe playing. 
yeah, yeah, that, absolutely. That's, that, that's a crazy talk. That's a crazy talk. Yeah, I mean, it's not, but it, but it's not. I mean, I mean, but these are the consequences. Like this has rally, and it also has, you know, this this discard refill effect. So the you know variance really starts to disappear. So the number of meaningful decisions actually starts to disappear quite rapidly, um, and that is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, so I mean, but and it also highlights another thing about actually about rally in in, in particular is that you know, uh, cantrips. Um, uh, cantrips enable something else in your deck on their own they're actually no good like a deck of 40 cantrips is garbage like that deck does nothing but a deck of a whole bunch of cantrips that gets you to busted other cards that actually have real functionality that's dangerous that's the real danger um so rally as a mechanic is definitely double-edged definitely mm. double-edged um Anyway, look, I'm right. not to not to doomsay. So hopefully this will just. I mean, but that said, like a season of war does create an awful lot of interesting scenarios uh, and and counterplay. But the downside is that you can get absolutely shafted because you flip into something terrible on a season of war. So what, that... worst case scenario, your opponent passes. So you uh, mm -hmm. a season of war reveal a new set. Don't have a good draw. See another season of war. Your opponent passes. <laughs> you season of war again. Into <laughs> Yeah, and you spent half your fate for that turn, drawn nothing, and your opponent is up three fate. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't imagine it's going to happen too often, but uh, yeah. I accept this... that challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See you this weekend. <laughs> All right. So let's move on. Let's get into the other half of the pack, which is the conflict half. Our foe does not wait. Great name. Uh, zero cost event, earth roll only. After you pass on declaring a conflict, choose an unbroken non-stronghold province you control. Search the top eight cards of your dynasty deck for a card and put it into that province. Face up, shuffle, max one pair of conflict opportunity, one cost. I would like this card a hell of a lot more if it worked on either player passing the conflict. Because that's kind of a sub-focus for Crab. Um, as is... Like, it's a Dynasty Tutor. It's a pretty powerful Dynasty Tutor, but you give up a conflict for it. There are some decks which will certainly go, you know what, I'm not doing politics. Um, I'm just going to pass and get myself another card of my choice or a card I really need and to hey, see or holding or something. So, yeah. Don't, maybe. don't forget there's only one influence. One influence. It is only one influence. Uh, Crab Splash is not the number one choice for many people but it does see some play Re reprieves really good or this one is you know useful for some people so yeah maybe maybe but i would like that if it worked on either player passing because it would may put another terror on if you're a crab dishonorary yeah. deck and just go no i do not want to pass i do not want to pass it, this it would certainly certainly be better all right yeah. um, it is earth roll locked um yes. but the dirt rolls tend to be quite good or at least the the earth keeper is Maybe not Seeker. So it's been kind of a mixed bag for Crab. Um, but yeah, it's better now. At least it's, like, it's not the other Earth locked Crab card, which is uh, with special defenses, which we don't talk about. Uh, we don't, we which, don't talk about which that. Which is dire. So yeah. Um, and th this card does seem to, again, re emphasize the idea that this particular pack is a, a dynasty control yeah. side. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good card. Justin, any big thoughts or, you know? Uh no no it's yeah. uh it's just it's it's nice like I love the name yeah uh, fantastic name fantastic flavor um probably doesn't do enough to to make it into a deck but yeah. not every card can yeah pretty much Fine. captivating story zero cost event water roll only action during a conflict choose a character that is participating alone on your side. That character gets plus one politics until the end of the conflict for each face of province you control. You may remove one fate from that character. If you do, honor it. One influence. Politics buff. Water roll only. Now, politics buffs aren't common. And again, it's talking about face of provinces. So this might just be plus one at the start and lose a fate for an honor, which is expensive in Crane. But maybe there are clan, other clans that will be interested in getting in on that whole politics thing with the crane splash. Maybe it can be a big-ish buff. I think maybe 
I think only Phoenix in the like a Phoenix High Glory deck would really, you know, be up to that. Face. It's Losing very face it's pretty rough. Sort of if this was a if there was um if there was a Phoenix card which was pay a fate honor a character as not as just one cost thing honor a character who's, who who's attacking by themselves yeah in a political conflict no, attacking or defending in, by in themselves water roll while splashing crane it is yeah is in the but fourth ascension would you play <laughs> one cost action honor a character in, in Phoenix you know uh no. They don't. They tried it briefly. There was a line card that when you're defending one of the attachments, defend at home or something like that. Yeah, one. but that you had to be uh, defending defend your for that. honor. I think. You had to defend honor. for that. It yeah, was it was guard good. duty. Guard and duty. it was yeah. that was keeper only. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe, um, maybe I don't think so. so my, but... my big problem with this is you want like you bonsai is bonkers. We love bonsai. Yeah. Uh, but you bonsai when you've got one character and it's early in the game. Well, I mean you bonsai a lot of time, but that's when it's the biggest impact. Uh, Captivating Story is probably going to give you one, maybe two politics, and that's it. Um, uh, yeah, obviously and, you have the option of yeah. doing other things, but losing a fate from a character is pretty pricey. Like you compare that to the line equivalent, which is plus six military for doing that with um, do 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 do, and actually that's a direct piracy because that's a attack alone one as well, isn't it? What's that line card? Legion of One. That's the one. That's the one. So, yeah, th this seems to be a poor equivalent of Legion of One in, in my opinion. And yeah. Um, I'm like, it's not far off a Legion of One uh, on the political side. Obviously, it's got the water roll thing going on, and it's probably not going to get you up to the plus six. Pol political buffs tend to be more tightly controlled than military ones anyway. Um I don't think it's a particularly great card, but I think the the flavor in terms of kind of describing, yeah, if you're just, yeah, in terms of kind of de describing the the role of a protagonist in a story, I think the flavor is absolutely glorious for this card. It's really, really beautiful stuff. But um, yeah, the, uh, the the card so, itself is me is mechanically not very strong. So what, this is the, the solo hero out there all alone while they're... Their holdings are getting crushed, so and but yeah, they sacrifice their own life. Great honor one, and great political one, consequence. One hundred percent. Like I think the flavor of capturing like the, the hero's journey is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um yeah, like the, the hero has to leave their familiar surroundings and go out into the world and sacrifice part of themselves to, to return uh, as a better person. It's and like play, it's flawless. It's absolutely brilliant. And, and they come from a shitty role. <laughs> yeah. Start the upbringing. Role, the, the underdog role, the role that nobody nobody thinks about, that nobody cares about, that nobody loves. And in <laughs> the end, they're marginally better than they were before me. Okay, we, we want this in uh, the next Winter Court winning deck. That's what we're looking for here. That's okay. that's the yeah. real uh, hero's absolutely. tale. All the Definitely. Um, yeah, the flavor is absolutely incredible. The card itself is decent. Um, maybe a little bit better than it seems, but probably not good enough to make it into decks. All right, educated Hemen, a zero cost attachment follower attached to an unbroken province you control. Each time you would refill attached province with a card, instead, look at the top two cards of your dynasty deck, top four cards instead of attached card provinces face down, refill the province with one of those cards, and discard the rest three influence. So, more. More dynasty control. manipulation, more dynasty control. Baz, any thoughts? I find it quite interesting that um, it discards cards. So you could be... Like, this might actually have application in a self-mill deck. <laughs> uh, it, because you're able to churn a lot of cards into the discard pile really fast. Uh, if you put it on a City of the Rich Frog, I believe you're able to mill nine cards a turn. <laughs> um, but like that aside, uh, I mean, it's certainly interesting. Uh, and extra dynasty manipulation definitely is a theme and certainly has applications. My, my concern with this is you draw it and you play it. You're probably not going to be able to trigger it until the discard phase. 
So basically into the fate phase when you're discarding cards from provinces. That's where you're going to trigger it. So you're not going to have an impact for it until the start of your next turn. And cards like that that take an entire turn to actually have an impact, you know, that's a strike against them. And the impact on this is that you just get to filter slightly. Um, one option is just to draw better. You know, that'll that'll certainly help. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's it's an interesting card. I don't particularly like it myself. Um, I think it's maybe something to consider because it could have application. I'm a little disappointed it has three influence. This could be a good one to have one influence. Um, okay, hold on. Someone's mad monkey is pointing out that it needs to be face down. Okay, so yeah, the eminent province city of the rich frog isn't going to work. That scratch yeah. that from the record. Um, we can edit it out as your. Uh... I I'd have to edit it out. I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you can't self-mill yourself, uh, which is probably a bad idea in the first place. Um, yeah, so that, that's it. I mean, the, the effect is minor. I think if if I had this turn one, uh, like on a stronghold, and it affect all my provinces or something like that, you know, that'd be interesting uh, insofar as it would have an effect, but you actually probably wouldn't notice it over turns, uh, which is kind of weird to say. Like it, improving a consistency of a draw is a, a pretty subtle thing. You don't always comprehend the impact of it. So, yeah, not, not going to play this card. Don't particularly like it, um, but it's, it's certainly interesting that it exists. All righty. Next up, Serene Isuzumi. Three cost, two military, two politics, one glory. Monk tattooed. Sincerity. When this character leaves play, draw a card. You may play this character as an attachment on the character you control, reducing its cost by two. If you do, it loses sincerity and gains the text. Action. During a conflict, move attached character home. One influence value. Uh, good to see that cost reduction on the attachment. Uh, yeah. Baz, what do you think? Baz, I can't hear you. Oh, God, no, this is junk. I hate this. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so if this was a two-cost, two-two uh, character with sincerity, you know, you consider playing it because it's a two-two for two. It's, like, not great, but you get the you get the card back then after that. Um, if this was a... And then the other one is you can reduce it to one-cost attachment that lets you move home. If that was a zero-cost attachment, I'd play it. You know, I, I quite enjoy Favored Mount, which will let you move in or move out. But moving in, I feel, is a little bit more valuable. So at a zero-cost attachment, I would play that attachment. But they've both been crammed together, and they've both been overcosted. And while I definitely like the idea of having flexibility in your cards, that they can do different things. So in this case, you can play as a character attachment. I get to have the flexibility between two overcosted cards. I think I'll just play a single card. That's a little bit better. Thanks. Oh, all right, fair enough. Any ideas, Justin, or are we pushing on no. prepared ambush? No, we're pushing on, I think. Prepared ambush, card I mentioned already. It is a battlefield. It is a zero-cost attachment attached to an unbroken province. Limit one battlefield attachment per province. During conflicts at attached province, you may play each character in your provinces as if it were in your hand. Each character played this way must enter play in the conflict. So you pop it on a province... You can play guys in your in your row into that province. So yeah. Um. Hmm. Hmm. It's more I mean, dynasty yeah. control. It's more. Uh, you know what? You've got a time for war. I've got prepared ambush in play. I'm gonna pass. If I need these guys, they're gonna show up, and I'd rather have a face. Oh, there we go. And um, then I let go. And uh, GG. Yeah, 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 but you know, things don't fall over. Or I don't actually attack that province. And uh, GG. Yeah, but I can play it down. Like I, you know, I've got it in hand. I don't like play it. Yeah. So th th those are my problems with it. The the fact that an attachment makes it vulnerable to all the attachment controls in there. You know, but there are other, other attachments to worry about. Um, but it it's the fact that it only affects one conflict and it, like with uh, Hidden Moon Dojo and with Daido Juji. It was great being able to just pull a guy out when you needed him, and then you're able to declare an attack with him because they weren't limited to just the conflict. 
uh, you could do it during the conflict phase. So if you needed to get an attacker, you could bring someone in and you could attack with them. Um, or you know, when your opponent attacks or you attack, you have it at all the different conflicts. Uh, so this is a toned down version. And you know, those were two fantastic cards that hit restricted and ban lists. So having a toned down version is good. Um, if I was a line player, I probably wouldn't play this. Um, I'd probably just make the characters instead and put another fine katana in or put another one cost character in, in my conflict deck instead. Um, but it's it, it's good that they're producing cards that are toned down versions of busted cards they had before. So I feel that's that's an indication of growth. Yeah, I think so. Any thoughts, Justin? Are you happy enough? No, no, I think Baz uh, said, uh, said it all. All right, Choo Choo out of the Phoenix. Wandering Mediator. One cost, zero military, two politics, one glory. Courtier, air roll only. Action during a conflict at an air province. Select one. Either move this character to the conflict or move it home. One influence. Thoughts, Justin? Yep, yeah, super good. Uh, Phoenix have not, to this point, had a, a one-cost conflict uh, courtier. Uh, it has the, the same stats as the Seeker of Truth, uh, Zero Two, who was the kind of the, the, the go-to political conflict character. Uh, so half the price um, is, a, yeah, has the courtier trait. Very important if you're playing in a courtier deck, obviously. Air roll only is completely understandable. Um, and the action is just kind of icing on the top. Like it's quite unreliable. It may not go off at all. Uh, but if it does, then happy days. You know, it's 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 a small bonus. But basically, this is a, a zero two conflict character for one with the courtier trait, all of which is very very good. And it also has one glory, which uh, helps you contest the favor, especially with the sour Marisado, which can pump that to three at the drop of a hat. Just overall, very very good. All right, good stuff. And particular of interest to the Seeker of Air Splash, where you've already got two air provinces in your stronghold. Yeah. And at one influence, great in a Seeker of Air Scorpion deck. Indeed. Strong stuff all over. Paralyzing Delicacy. Zero cost event. Poison. Action. During a conflict, choose a participating character. That character gets minus one military into the end of the conflict for each face down card in its controller's provinces to influence so it's a subs could be a substantial enough uh military debuff on a character could be minus three could be minus four you know it's you know could be nothing if they just pass through and don't you know make any of their provinces mm. you know mm. is so it poison is free this, mm. this combos with uh, the character we saw previously that puts everything face down yeah um, but i think a lot of the time it's going to be like a minus two minus yeah. three i guess it's, it's free not... it's free ah, you still have to play it you do you could but play it's something free. else i always look twice at free cards so yes yeah, it might there might be it might have a, an important place in a, a Shinobi deck later. So obviously it works really well with Bayushi Amoro, um, and uh, Hamatsu, the Poison Master, can fetch it out. So they're both Shinobis. Uh, that could be the start of something interesting. Um, but yeah, as, as John is saying, um, the Tower decks tend to make one, so they've got one face-down card. Uh, and with the Swarms, you're giving a small guy... Yeah. Minus four, so yeah, maybe maybe not so good. Uh, it's cool yeah, flavor. No, I, it's cool flavor. It is, it is cool flavor. I, I think it's yep. something we. I think the the scorpion keep an eye on it. I don't think it's anywhere yet, uh, but it could be interesting, especially if you get more effects around killing people with zero military. Yeah. All right. Countryside trader, which is a quite interesting card actually. Two cost, one military, two politics, one glory. Courtier merchant. Action. During a conflict in which this character is attacking, spend one fate and choose a triggered ability printed on the attack province. Attack. Resolve that ability as if you control the province, ignoring all triggering conditions. Two influence. Is this card a million rules questions? 
because it seems to be a million rules questions to yeah, me. Well, and, and unfortunately, the answer seems to be yes, it can a lot of the time. So, if you've got an on break ability, can you go with this guy? You know what? I'm going to trigger the on break ability. Yes, you can. That seems legit. That seems legit. Works with the on reveals. Uh, the big one that everyone has commented on is uh, upholding authority. Yeah. If you trigger it with authority, you get to reveal your hand because it says attacker. <laughs> And then, and then discard one of your own cards of your choice, mm. one or more of your own choice. Yeah. So keep keep an eye on the wording for provinces because if they specifically say uh, the attacking player, then you probably don't want to do that. You could have hard times with two of these guys attacking into the wrong province. You'd be like, oh man, this is gonna suck. This is gonna suck a lot. Mm. Mm. And but I mean. The, the nightmare scenario, or there's a couple of nightmare scenarios. Um, like it can trigger restoration of balance, you can draw can three cards, of famine. Uh, yeah. so what that's art of war, so we yeah. have art of war draws three cards. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there, I mean, there are a lot of good if on break that this can suddenly just pop out. And if you because you're still in the conflict, you know, it can have a big impact on, on the game. So the so uh, the really trigger good. of stuff like I win the conflict as a defender, you could just trigger it with that, right? Yes, you can. So if you're against defend the wall, you could be like, I'll trigger the ring. I'll trigger the ring. Yep. Yeah, that seems like it might be really good. Or it might not. It, but yeah, it might so be it, really is, good. Is that good for two fate on a character and then spending an extra face to actually use the mm. ability? Because uh, I know the first time I looked at this, uh, I was like, oh, you know, you can use it on manicure gardens, get a face. And John was like, you have to spend a face. That's probably the worst option yeah. ever. Um, but I mean, there are, so there are, there's a certain amount of cost involved in it. If you do break any of the provinces we've been talking about, your opponent still gets to trigger it. It's not like you're, yeah. you're one and only use. Yeah, if you're not you've stealing got, it. Yeah. If you've got two countryside traders and a bunch of faith, you know, you can do it multiple times. So, uh, yeah, it, it's good. It may require a reassess of how we look at provinces. That said, um, Unicorn already have that one cost to one that, you know, when you come to the play, stops you from triggering your province, which in theory should have made us reassess everything, uh, but for some reason didn't. So, But that guy saw a lot of play. Still sees a lot of play. He still does, yeah. The Shinjo and Ambusher, isn't it? That, that's exactly it. And the Countryside Trader, I feel, fits in a similar space where if Unicorn get threatening enough, clans may need to reassess their mm. their provinces. Um, but that's not always going to be the case. Uh, like one of the big ones is Rally. Rally to the cause. Like You can just switch it back. That's pretty cool. It, like, it really seems a bit like a... Ah, oh, sure, I've got some space. I'll toss two of these in a deck and it might solve some problems for me. Yeah. Yeah. Justin, any thoughts before we move on? Nope. Uh, none. It's a really interesting card and Unicorn have a growing base of courtiers that really dick around with people's provinces. Yep. Um, they so... come to our lands and you know do all crazy trading yeah, jerks. They, they took our jobs. Oh, wow. It's a four-cost event. These are always fun to read. Uh, scouted terrain. Void roll only. We better be building to something big here, lads. Action. During the conflict phase, choose an opponent. If that opponent controls at least four face-up provinces, you may attack that player's stronghold this phase. Two influence. Okay, so if you've been having a terrible game, or a terrible, terrible game, or have been playing to this, you go, okay, I'll spend four, I'll attack your stronghold. Away we go. All right. Um, it doesn't even have to be a terrible turn. Yeah. You know, there are, there are obviously ways to reveal, and if you've taken two provinces, you know, or if you say if you, well... Yeah, how many do you need to take? So if you'd taken two provinces, you'd need to reveal another two. 
so yeah, if, if you've had a game where you've managed to take two provinces and you've revealed one, you can uh, send a schmuck in to reveal the third, the fourth one, not bother breaking it, and then play this to go in on the, the stronghold. And now you are playing a void roll, which is the kind of big limiting on this. If they cancel your four fate event, you're really crying. Uh, but yeah, it could be super interesting. Uh, I don't think it would be wise to build a deck around this. It's certainly possible to do, um, especially with Shiro Shinjo getting a boost. Now, Eminent Provinces are a thing. Um, yeah. And and obviously, um, the HMT decks are getting more Provinces revealed every turn because they're able to, to burst in. Oh, and yeah, Colix is pointing out that it works with Chasing, with the, chasing the Sun, um, which I'm not sure is necessarily a merit. <laughs> Uh, Woo, more face, infinite yeah, face. Woo. Yeah, you mean you, you could build a themed deck, basically focus completely around this, and just re- use all of the the ways to reveal problems as fast as possible, and then turn to just go in on the stronghold. Yeah, like I wouldn't, but you could, you could. Alrighty, last card. Field of Ruin, one cost attachment, battlefield. Reduce the cost to play this card by one if it is played on a broken province. Attach to a province, limit one battlefield re- attachment per province. Reaction, after the conflict phase begins, discard each card and attach province. Again, a little bit more dynasty control, a little bit more holding control, critically. So if you've got some guy who just keeps flipping holdings on his broken provinces and using them and just annoying you, screw him. Put on a Field of Ruin. This feels kind of narrow as meta goes. It feels... Uh, I don't think this one is going to see much play. It's an interesting idea, but I don't think it's going to say a huge amount of play. It's, it's a really bad sabotage that hangs yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah, not a fan. But isn't roll locked. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, but if you, let's say you put it on City of the Rich Frog. I mean, if it's City of the Rich Frog is... You get it. I mean, it just mills every turn, I guess. That's okay, but you know, once you break it, like you're paying a fate unless you've broken, in which case you've broken City of the Rich Frog, it's kind of irrelevant. Maybe. Yeah, is this, is this a maybe we'll, to, maybe we'll see some kind card. of dynasty mill strategy at some point? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. All right. That is our pack which we have reviewed, is out, and we have reviewed. The next pack is... I think the this cycle will come out fairly regularly. Uh, the next cycle, maybe not so much, but we'll see. Disruption can happen at pretty much any time. Yeah, so I mean, we civilization is about to shut happened. down. Absolutely. Uh, we have this weekend in Ireland, in Dublin, the Irish Kodai, the Dublin Kodai will run, and in... Uh, I want to say Spain. There is a coda running in. What's the place called? Because of the V. Z. Uh, that's... Pardon? Z. 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 Zaragoza. Zaragoza. Uh, Z- Zaragoza. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. And they are running. Probably will be a pretty big coda. Um. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, so I, yeah. I think the numbers are like in the hundreds, like eighty plus. I think for Zaragoza one, and we're probably looking at. The low 20s for the yeah. Irish one. All right. Well, you know, stuff is going the way it's going. Um, yeah. All righty. Well, yeah. Uh, we'll... So one final thing. Just uh, so it's Roba. It's 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 the weekly Roba plug. Oh, true, yeah. Or the bi-weekly. So um, Jack Murray's game, Radiant Offline Battle Arena, is doing its second um, Kickstarter uh, at the moment. The Kickstarter has reached its target goal, so it is now funded. It is now guaranteed to go ahead. So if you put any money into it, uh, the product is coming to you. So uh, check that out. I'm just going to stick a link in the chat now, and we'll stick a link in the description of the video. Uh, Go check it out. It's an absolutely amazing game uh, made by a really dedicated game designer, and it 100% deserves support. So go put some money in. Absolutely. All right. Uh, anything else we want to kind of set up for? The Kodai is still happening, yes. Um, it has moved location, but yes, it is still happening. Is there anything else we want to mention or plan for for two weeks' time? Uh, 
We may do a bit of micro casts because hey, we have that uh, facility now. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So we we might have an opportunity to talk to a few people over this weekend, um, and we will definitely put uh, a meta check up for Dublin, which will be like this <laughs> a handful of people in the store are playing. But we'll definitely do one for Saragossa. Yeah, and we'll try getting from those guys because that'll be a serious tournament. Um, with serious people. For but, serious uh, people, yeah. yeah. Also, Mean, Meanwhile, we're going to have a local event for local people with a lot of fun. Absolutely. So but there was some L5 War news this week that came out. Uh, so much. Kind so of much. middle of the old pack. Uh, the new head of OP for CCGs, or well, one of the people running uh, OP for CCGs in FFG is Tess Keen and Josh Massey. So... Uh, we're not so the, bugging Matt Holland and Alice Watkins anymore because they're doing the minis games. Uh, instead, we're going to be bugging those people. Uh, there will be events happening. And the L5 or RPG is no longer being published by FFG. It's going to be published by Edge Entertainment, a... I want to say Spanish company, but I'll have to double check it, that. It sure. is. It is a Spanish it is. company. Yeah. Edge, is, Edge is Spanish, yeah. So I mean, they actually have a some credentials already. They did the like translations for a bunch of the D and D stuff. So we know the quality is solid, and um, they're not gonna uh, rough shot it. They released the Anima RPG. That's the one thing I can think of them actually making. Uh, but I would say they will just bring in the same freelancers, and I would say the quality will remain probably consistent. So that is good yeah, news. Yeah. So the, the the writing the writing will remain the same and the production values that they have are also quite good. So we're yeah. it, this is a good thing. So this is part of the, the greater Asmo Day restructuring. Um there's also some interesting stuff happening with the distribution over in the US. Yeah. Um but that's that's a little bit outside of our wheelhouse. It's uh, gonna trickle out from Gamma, I'd say we'll we'll find out some more stuff possibly over the the course of I didn't hear that much about current product lines for them but there was some stuff yeah. kind of slowly it, tripping I mean, out it so it certainly feels like they're they're cornering off the parts of the business that do the different parts so i wouldn't be surprised if we see all of their board games going over to z-man games for example and um, all of the books are going over to Ankylite, which um i believe they're coming in nottingham so there's a lot of black library guys there which is is good news and um, that's only a good thing for us uh the OP guys are getting themselves a little bit more organized. Uh, we've got more now than we had before, and they're splitting to support specific streams. So the fact that they're split into miniatures and LCGs or card games generally might mean that those parts of the business are splitting off. Um, from our perspective as L5 or players, this means we're beginning to get to the end of the restructuring phase within FFG and Asmodee, which can only be good for us because... Uh, the recent bout of silence seems to have been connected to the internal uh, changes and the sooner that they level out and we can get to solid support and focusing on the game we love, the better. Yeah, I think we could might see a... It might be a bit of a strange year for Off of War, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully things are going to work out. Hopefully things and, are going to work uh, out. Just, just on the, the Dublin event, um, I think... Like we, we have a little bit of insight in it because uh, people here know the people running it um, and own you yourself were heavily involved in that as well. Yep. Uh, but I think it's a real credit to the player base because there were briefly some problems and it looked like you know we mightn't have gotten uh, any price support, uh, which it, you know FFG stepped up and uh, have got sent out and has arrived, so it's ready. But there were players who were rummaging through their collections and were working out what they could offer as price support. Uh, and there were well wishes, and there were... Um, yeah, Mark Armitage was trying to get the, the place so he could buy tickets to both the Dublin and Zaragoza events just so he could help support yeah. the organizers. Uh, Kikita Corey was talking about, hey, how can I get some pizzas to deliver to these guys? You know, the... the like issues with FFG aside, uh, the the player base like really came together to make sure that these events were going to be successful, and I think that that kind of really shows the L5 or spirit when it comes yeah. down to it. And uh, all credit to John for running around to uh, all week to reorganize uh, reorganize things and keep uh, and, and find new venues and 
otherwise run and yeah. suffer around the place. Great job. Great job. I'm, I'm, I'm re relying on you, Owen, to, to work out how to phrase the, the new uh, Hell or High Water story. Because, uh, this, this, <laughs> yeah, I can, like... uh, I'll, I'll throw something together for that. Uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so it should be good. should be good. Uh, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, John, uh, John had to run the gauntlet this week. And uh, good on him. Good on him. Alrighty. Is that everything? I think it is. Alright, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for chatting. Uh, see you all in two weeks. Bye. Talk to you all, all soon. Right. Bye now. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.